Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering Knowledge 15, brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back everyone. We are live in Las Vegas for ServiceNow, Knowledge, 14, Knowledge 15. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Jonathan Sparks, Director of Product Management at ServiceNow. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, so uh, ServiceNow, obviously the keynote today, there's a lot of product stuff. Uh, Fred Letty, the founder up there. Really great software. Mm -hmm. and, and I could just see the demos. You can see the packed house. A lot oh, of yeah. commentary, a lot of laughs. Very very cool, but it's a really under the hood kind of focus. Um, so, you got great success, the next 10 years is being laid out, that's cloud native, born in the cloud, mm -hmm. enterprise grade, that's the holy grail for, for the enterprise. Give me both, I got to do both. Exactly. Um, you guys have a lot of successful people building on, on ServiceNow, so tell us, you know, this creator con is going on, you guys have um, Create Now developer program, mm -hmm. what is the developer status of ServiceNow are you moving along slowly, getting getting feedback? Yeah. Are you guys scaling it up? Give us the give us the data. Yeah. So, uh, I think about uh, when I think about developing on ServiceNow. I think about when I came into ServiceNow. Um, my background was as a software engineer, and when I came into ServiceNow, um, I was a pretty decent engineer previously. Um, but all of a sudden, with the platform that ServiceNow has built, I, I was all of a sudden an incredible engineer. Um, because I got to skip a lot if of. If you do say so. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so myself. Sir, <laughs> that made you incredible. <laughs> Is this being filmed? Um, <laughs> so. Sorry, Gary. It, and, and really, it was because uh, it allowed me to skip um, all the things that I would be wasting my time on. Uh, so I can't tell you how many times I had to, to, to build user authentication, how many times I had to think about how we're going to do security, uh, what database are we going to use, uh, what, what version of that database, right? Like there's a whole uh, part of the stack that I didn't have to worry about anymore um, because, you know, as a developer, I, I just, I want to solve problems for people and see them get excited about that stuff. Um, I don't necessarily want to have to build out middle layers, right? That there's no, that there's nothing about that that gets me to uh, showing somebody something that makes them smile and solves a problem for them. So, as an engineer, all of a sudden, I become an incredible engineer, but the, but the, the wonderful part about it is actually for, takes people who aren't actually engineers, aren't actually developers, and makes them developers, because they, it's a tool set that's actually approachable, so that you get people who maybe have more of an IT background, maybe more of an admin background, all of a sudden, they're building applications uh, and, and really solving people's problems with those. So, so we hear that a cool. lot, but so can we uh, unpack that a little bit? I mean, what does that really mean? I mean, what skill sets do I need? Do I need to know SQL? Do I need to know general programming skills? Or do mm -hmm. I not need to know that to be an, to be an incredible developer? Uh, to be, so, so just to get onto the ServiceNow platform, I mean, we kind of cater to, to three different types of developers, three different types of skill sets. So if you don't have any of that background at all, we have tools that you can use to start building out uh, applications that allow you to provide you know, uh, interfaces into the services that your business provides. If you're somebody who has a little bit more of an advanced skill set, we've got tools for you to build applications. And then if you go all the way to the professional developer, um, you saw Fred rolled out, he showed a, a little bit of a glimpse of the dev developer studio that we, that we put out. Mm -hmm. That's really geared towards prof you know, more professional developers to have the kinds of things, the kinds of uh, experiences they're, they're used to, to, to using to build applications uh, as the way that they build applications in service now going forward. Yeah, he talked about three personas, the portal admin, the service designer, and the professional developer. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm envisioning that's a spectrum of sophistication and and programming expertise, right? Mm -hmm. how's exactly. The, how's the, how, when you talk to people at places like CreatorCon, what's the mix? What's that pie chart look like? So the mix for us, it's going to be more. It's going to be more on the professional side, right? Um, what we've seen is, you know, you get you get people who are developers that all of a sudden start getting on the platform and they realize how productive they can make them, mm -hmm. and then they get excited about it. And we can see from the kind of content that we've been we've had to put together because there's been demand for it. You know, you look like four knowledges ago, there was like 63 activities that were developer focused kind of activities, focused on custom application development. Well, you know, two knowledges ago, all of a sudden it's 100, now it's 140 different activities here that we have. 
And then now we're actually launching CreatorCon, which is a whole separate conference that's a tail end, on the tail end of knowledge, specifically for developers, uh, uh, it focused, the content focused on those types of Is that of education and certification only, or is it more of uh, build a community, or all three, or what's the? Yeah, so so what CreatorCon is really, it's um, it's it's got a, f a few different things. So it's got, we've got 14 breakouts. Those are really hands-on keyboard, get people building stuff. We go a level deeper. Uh, you know, you kind of get, get into lower levels of how things work, because in the end, these are more the developers. They're hardcore, basically. Yeah, they want to know stuff that yeah. other people don't, and frankly, <laughs> not a lot of people have the answers to. So, um, there's 14 of those, there's 14 sessions where we're just kind of presenting. Uh, we've got, um, we're going to do a, a round of certifications there as well, so people can get certified as a ServiceNow developer. We're going to do 400 of those uh, at once. And then we've got, uh, the, the hack zone, and the hack zone is really a big place where people can go, and we have, you know, uh, core, you know, architects from our development team, people who really know this stuff really well, who are just going to be kind of hanging out and just being there to work with, with anybody who wants to come and start building stuff. So we got some tweets coming in here, and <laughs> looking at some tweets coming on the, uh, the event here. CreatorCon is maxed out with 1,200 participants. So, you know, CreatorCon is awesome. This is exciting since Salesforce yep. and ServiceNow are going to war over dev soon. This is from uh, Robert <laughs> and another one's from Roy. So again, huge numbers, right? I right. mean, this is ridiculous, uh, awesome numbers. I mean, 1,200 developers. So obviously your business model is working on the business side. Yep. You know, you're seeing big names here. And with, you know, Frank Sullivan pointed out, you, you have companies bringing a uh, you know, cadre of people here. It's not right. one guy coming yeah. here, it's like a bunch of people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 1,200 is a big number. That number actually, we got to that number pretty quick, as it turns out. Uh, it, we, there was definitely a moment where like, how many people are we going to get, you know? We were a little bit unsure, but really quickly it started filling up, and all of a sudden we started doing things like, how do we get a bigger room? Is there a bigger room? Can we get a bigger room, please? You know, and I think we did that like twice. Where we more had chairs. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we need more tables, more whiteboards, more markers, right? That's the theme from Frank, Fred Luddy's whole speech. I mean, every year, get a bigger room. Yeah, more people exactly. showing up. Um, but what's the makeup of the developers? I mean, obviously, enterprise. Is it the thesis of born in the cloud mentality plus enterprise grade? Is that the confluence of what you're seeing in the trends? Yeah, so, so you know, the developers that, that I'm seeing, um, they kind of get it. They're focused on enterprise applications. And what do I mean? So, you know, when, when you build on top of ServiceNow, you get things that you wouldn't get otherwise. Like, for example, if I want to go sell an application to Johnson & Johnson, <laughs> they're going to give me a huge checklist that's going to like be a 40 foot long piece of paper that I have to go check all my boxes to be compliant, right? So if you're building an application on top of service now, we've already gone through all that painful process, right? You know, we, we already have pharmas who are customers. So if I'm a developer, right, and you'll see this from the kind of vendors that we've got, is they get it, right? They don't want to go sell one, two dollar applications on an iPhone. They want to go sell applications that make real money because they're selling to enterprises because with us, they can sell to enterprises because our platform is already accepted and in those places. And all they have to do is just go build those apps and then they can go distribute into those people. John, talk about the nuance between enterprise and consumer because you kind of were teasing that out there. I'll, I'll, I'll lead, in, lead you into the question. Um, standard, scalable software, not a lot of customization. Put it out there, rolls out use the cloud, flywheel kicks in. And then the enterprises, you mentioned Johnson & Johnson, they're just one of many that want, they want things their way. Pixels, artwork, graphics, workflow. So they have a lot of different use cases. So it's really hard to develop that boilerplate product. Mm -hmm. um, do you agree with that? That's kind of the need, kind of the table stakes and the design? And you guys look at it that way in this developer kind of environment? We saw some stuff with Bootstrap. We see um, the notion of a CMS, you guys. Encouraging yeah. people. I mean, the answer is, you know, I think you brought up uh, some good stuff in there. And and when you think about consumer products, um, it is really sort of one solution uh, to match, you know, this wide audience, right? Like, I don't. Everybody doesn't get their own user interface of Facebook, for example, right? I just I log in and I get what everybody else gets. Um, but the way ServiceNow is is built, the way people build applications on ServiceNow is there's a lot of tools around how can people actually customize my application that I build once they get it, 
uh, which which uh, which is is a great great thing for people that want to sell into enterprises because in the end everybody has their own process that's really specific to them. They'll all tell you that they're different, and they all are different. And so you actually get that level of customized customization that's available when you purchase an application as an enterprise. So the next question, what kind of innovation do you see coming out of this early days of the developer program? It's because you guys are getting your sea legs now, great numbers, great adoption, so you're, the curve's kicking up, and this is obviously going to be a program that's going to continue. Um, it makes total sense to see the connect the dots there, but what are some of the early um, coolness you're seeing coming out of this? Yeah, you know, um, when we, so we just released the App Store, um, and when we released the App Store, we were kind of, um, we weren't sure the type of applications that we would get. Would they be really just extensions, like little features like, oh, this badge shows up thing when an incident gets submitted, or would they be like full-blown applications that maybe go into a different space outside of IT? And, and it, it turns out a lot of applications that are getting built aren't, aren't IT-focused applications. They're actually, uh, the people who are building up, uh, applications that, that feel like they're going to be really successful right now are people that are picking verticals where there's a lot of skeletons in the closet and going and solving big problems there. So cleaning up the old legacy cobweb apps that are out there, kind of like dying on the vine, if and you what's, will. What's, the big, what's one of the biggest examples of that? The medical, right? There, we have, we have a lot of vendors right now that are like, man, I can just take service now, go sell it into hospitals, right, and solve a ton of problems yeah. that yeah. those guys have, and uh, and they're and they're already doing it. We've already got those apps up on the store. So they're compliance problems, they're uh, meaningful use, all kinds of things that are going on in the healthcare yeah. business, right? Exactly. Yeah. I What's, mean, go ahead, please. Well, I mean, it, you know, in the end, uh, you've got like if you look at uh, uh, a hospital. There's just a ton of equipment, right? Uh, you look at uh, labs, medical labs, all the equipment, all the vendors that they have to manage, right? So there's just this, uh, this huge um, manually, painfully done dance of what's supposed to be where and who's supposed to get what, and how do you deal with what vendor and what interface do you have to interact with that vendor. It's all 700 different forms for 700 different vendors, and how do you bring that chaos to something that makes sense, and 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 hospitals, you know, medical, you know, hospitals are really looking for that. Kind and you of guys stuff. call that tribal knowledge. There's a lot of a lot of that going on in, 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 in that space. What, what is uh, Create Now? What is uh, Create Now is the is the name for our, our the product that we sell that is the platform. That's really what it's called. So when we talk to customers, what we're selling them is Create Now, and that's really that's really the uh, the ability to create applications within within their their business for their for their internal customers. And, and there's a developer program around that and, and CreatorCon is sort of a... a yeah, the, so the developer program is, um, if you look at if you look at any platform, um, and, and you, you started mentioning us competing with Salesforce for developers, so uh, the platform who gets the developers is the platform that wins, and that's really what, what, what we know and what we're aggressively going to attack is getting the developers. And so the dev program is, really the place where we, we, come, we go to developers, yeah. right? It's their place, it's where they can go, they can collaborate with each other. They got, we took a bunch of training that, that we had actually charged for in the past and we just put it up there because we want to be, we want to be so easy for developers to get up to speed. Also, if you look at, you know, we're, we're an enterprise platform, yeah. you know, an instance of ServiceNow is not necessarily, um, has not necessarily been a cheap thing in the past to get, right? So you have developers who want to build on the platform, but they couldn't necessarily get access yeah. to it. Now you go sign up for the dev program, and we give you an instance. That's it, it's yours. You can just go there and start, and start using I love, it. I love this phrase, we're targeting developers, like they're some object. I mean, they're human people, right? I mean, Absolutely. So like um, Fred brought up his keynote, Frank teased it out yesterday about being easy to use and elegant, but UX was mentioned in the keynote, making things beautiful matters, one, and two, people are human, they want value, right? So it's a, it's a human trade, not it, developers. So yeah, I, you yeah. know, we're targeting developers like there's some sort of object. <laughs> What's your take on that? And if, if they're humans, they have needs, right? Okay. You mentioned you're an incredible developer because ServiceNow enabled you to get rid of all the grunt work uh -huh. and building out some stack stuff that's yeah. been built before, right? Yeah. So what is that value? Is it reducing steps, saving time, making things beautiful? What is that key human aspect to winning the key developer? Key human developer aspect to winning developers. Um, I think it's coming to them on, on, uh, on their level. Um, 
you know, if if they're if you look at uh, that type of person, um, they're really used to um, very easy access to free tools to get themselves up to speed. You know, I can go, I can get Angular today off the site, right? I can go, I can sign up for just about every other platform, get it, get it immediately, uh, and I'm and I'm ready to go. And so, expecting that that somehow we're going to win the hearts and minds of, of, of people while, while making their life difficult to actually get access to us, it's just Getting home early and having a beer right? is, a, is a value proposition. Right? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> making people happy is, uh, is one of them, right? Exactly. All right, so John, we gotta go get the hook here. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Creative My pleasure, Con, thanks guys. Uh, 1,200 plus people showing up at the, at the door, growing every day, so check it out. Creative Con is a conference, a growing developer community. Congratulations. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break.